company, a company called Chegg. Now, Chegg is a company that helps students in the United States with their homework. And Chegg is struggling. It's struggling in user growth, and the company has blamed it all on chat GPT. We've already spoken about this, and yes, you know about IBM as well. Its CEO, Arvind Krishna, has said that he could easily see thousands of non-customer-facing jobs getting replaced by artificial intelligence, and this, he says, could happen within the next five years, as quickly as that. And yes, now, Jeffrey Hinton, who is an AI pioneer working with Google, he has resigned. Alarmingly, the psychologist and the computer scientist that he is has warned that the development of artificial intelligence must not be scaled up until we know how to control it. The current rate of AI development to Jeffrey Hinton is scary. Those are his words. Google has responded to this. It says the company is monitoring emerging risks while also innovating boldly. Can they draw a balance? How big a threat is it? Is this a beast that cannot be controlled or not? Let's get a discussion going on this. Uh, Aditya Narayan Mishra, Director and CEO at CL HR Services, joining us. Great to have you with us this evening, Mr. Mishra. How big a threat do you see AI as far as ChatGPT and many AI tools are concerned? How much do you think it's going to be a threat to startups, startups like Chegg, which was a homework assist kind of startup? We are going to see that much more of AI in our lives here in India, abroad as well, already what have you seen? And perceptionally, how much more of a threat do you think AI is? I think uh, the tasks which are repetitive in nature, uh, such as follow-ups, such as standard canned responses to be given to emails or on chat, many of such repetitive, regular, routine tasks where the decision making involved is fairly simple are going to get eliminated um, ultimately. I think uh, Jeffrey's uh, statement and resignation comes at a, a time when the world is talking about it in a very significant way. Uh, look at how ChatGPT 3.5 has kind of uh, really blossomed there are 100 million users which have suddenly come because of the impact that it is creating. Nobody knew when ChatGPT 1, ChatGPT 2, ChatGPT 3 came. But in just a matter of six months, we have 100 million users. That actually tells us the impact that it can create on all our lives globally. I think it is a wake-up call for many people not only who are in the industry today, but also the people who are in their high schools and uh, early days of university, that they need to ask this question that how equipped they are to take on roles which involve deeper decision-making, deeper thinking, innovating, and so on. So, uh, it's interesting days ahead. Mishra, but every I don't time, want to... Yes, but Mr. Mishra, every time there is a new technology that comes in, at one level you have our ability to adapt to newer technology. And one yeah. way that we say that, oh, again, this has come and it's going to take away our jobs and take away what uh, we knew already. Uh, this is what machines are going to be uh, doing now. As far as that argument is concerned, it has happened in the past. How different is it this time around? Because still, it's new technology. If you take it at face value, it's a technology that we need to master. And you are going to need to stay ahead of the curve because as the technology develops, you will need more people to help it go along that path even further. Absolutely. That's the point that I was trying to make. Uh, uh, thanks, Vikram. I think... Um, you know, if we look into history, when industrialization happened in a big way, the people who were craftsmen, who were doing things by their own, using their hands, were all thought to be going out of job. But the, it hasn't happened so. While those jobs went away, something else came up. So I think uh, people will have to upskill themselves. I think our research shows that many organizations are 
bolstering their learning and development budgets so that they are able to upskill their workers, their employees. They need to learn how to deal with this artificial intelligence-led task. Some yes, tasks, but do you see, but cadets. Mr. Mishra, on that point, let me interject because do you see corporates interested in helping employees upskill so that they are that much more invested in the newer technology? Do they see the potential of that or do they think that, yes, let's get in the technology, then we don't need to spend so much on human resources? No, I think both the things will happen. Organizations who are interested in creating a long-term sustainable kind of an environment for themselves, they will, of course, let go of the roles which can be automated. And at the same time, they will identify employees who have the potential to learn and upskill themselves. Otherwise, the business environment cannot really uh, be sustainable. I think that's how organizations are going to distinguish themselves from one from the other. How deep a shakeup do you think we'll have in the interim? Uh, because you have this major kind of exit coming in on Google, a godfather of AI like he is known. He goes out to say that this is a beast that cannot uh, be controlled and you need to do that. Because that sounds like a real threat to me and someone who is really someone who is entrenched in the newer technology. No, I think uh, uh, what he is possibly referring to is talking about the potential downsides. I don't think he is talking about the job losses per se. He is possibly talking about the implications that this kind of a technology can bring. I, we had these discussions when uh, the genome project was on. So I think this is just a coincidence that we have corporate leaders talking about job losses due to the introduction of new technology and his resignation, which has come, which is possibly more a moral dilemma that he is kind of bringing in, which is much higher order AI impl implementation which is a few years away from us. But the point that he makes is relevant. I think the top echelons of uh, India Inc. and the global uh, industry needs to really think about uh, some of these implications, which are much higher order compared to the job losses that we are talking about. Mishra, right now, as far as uh, the kind of moves you're seeing here in India and abroad by companies by people who are trying to upscale. What are the trends that you've noticed? Is this uh, likely uh, a scenario where certain industries become that much more susceptible to uh, the negative impact, if you may call it that, of AI more than others? Well, I think there will be some roles uh, uh, like the uh, administrative roles, secretarial roles, even drafting roles in legal uh, and in recruitment, certain kind of roles, customer service, certain kind of roles, all of these uh, are under threat. So uh, they have to upskill themselves to take on jobs which are uh, much higher complexity in nature, where decision making cannot be easily automated. But having said that, it will take a few years. So all the industry sectors, non-tech industry sectors will take some time to implement this AI technology. Uh, it could be simple chat, customer service, and all of that. It will take some time. So it's not going to happen overnight, yes. uh, but it is better that we wake up and yes. uh, prepare ourselves. But you started off by talking about how quickly it has grown already. You're seeing different versions of chat GPT come through and every yes. version is doing remarkably better than the earlier yeah. one. So it is moving, yeah. as technology does, at a much faster pace. And as far as AI is concerned, uh, we are seeing those kind of strides being made. How much it uh, really threatens our jobs, our startups, that remains to be seen. And for that, we'll keep uh, connecting with you and finding tips of how we can upskill and stay ahead of the technology curve. Many thanks for joining us, Mr. Mishra. Appreciate your uh, opinion here on this edition of India Tonight. We take a quick break now on the show. But when we return, we are putting the spotlight on uh, Maruti Suzuki as far as their plans are concerned when it comes to uh, 
their sales growth. They've set a target. We've got an exclusive story coming up on that. And also, we'll talk about the political era because uh, as far as Sharad Pawar is concerned, he is stepping down as the chief of the NCP. Why exactly has he done that? We'll talk about that and much more. So stay with us.